This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Talk about the 95 Survivor Series. This is the big match that uh, I think everybody should go out of their way to see if they want to watch one Diesel match from this era. It's Bret Hart pinning Diesel in 24 minutes and 54 seconds to win the title. There's a big spot here where Brett goes flying off of the apron through a table. That's of course the Spanish announce table. It was tremendous. And, uh, he, he sets up a jackknife. He being diesel pronouns, pal and Brett small packages him and pins diesel. And then diesel sits up furious and mouths the word motherfucker. And it's pretty cool. Three and a half stars. Great match. Love the finish. The, 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 the silly table spot that has been overdone to death was brand new back then for the WBF. I love this. What'd you think? I thought it was excellent. I, I thought that the, the match itself was probably one of the best matches that uh, diesel had ever had. And it told a great story and it was a very simple finish. Um, that worked. It was believable. Anybody can get caught in a small package. Of course, afterwards, Diesel just goes nuts. He jackknifes, uh, Brett twice after the match. He's attacking several referees. He's being booed by a large majority of the fans and Jr. and, and Jim or Jr. and Vince easy for me to say are playing it up as if this is a full blown heel turn. Was this way overdue at this point? Do you think, or was this the right time to turn diesel full blown heel? No, I thought I completely thought it was the right time to turn him because he had reached the point where the audience didn't see him as the champion and kind of saw him as the guy that was, you know, envisioned as the champion. They weren't, weren't accepting it. Didn't want it. Weren't going to buy it. Um, however, him being a disgruntled, pissed off guy about that did work. And, and that, that played a lot into, you know, who Kevin was at the time. And Kevin wasn't necessarily all that happy at the time. So now let's get that and put that on camera and put it on the air. Let's, um, let's talk about diesel here in this era. He starts to change a little bit. You know, we just mentioned when he gets pinned here, he sits up, you know, says motherfucker, you can read it plain as day on his lips. Uh, and then, you know, a, a little later, not too much longer after this, we're going to see him start flipping the bird. What do you remember about, I mean, this meeting, was there more to it than just, Hey guys, hang in there. Is this sort of a, Hey, let's try to get a little more adult and a little less childish because it does feel like at least with diesel, we're turning the page here and we're going to go more adult. Yeah, it, I mean, it was a conscious effort, definitely. And it was an effort to, for our pay-per-view events in particular, to make them a little edgier. And you could definitely get away with more on them because you're not on USA Cable and there's not someone that is going to censor you and say, ah, hey, wait a minute, no, you can't do that. On pay-per-view, you pretty much had fair reign. It, not necessarily something you want to do all the time because of your audience, but it was enough to break character and get a little bit of a peek and, Oh my God, was he supposed to do that? Because it wasn't all done. Now it's all been done so much that it's just, eh, it's a spot. The, uh, the big title change here is not the focus very long. It almost fades into the background the very next day. Of course, this is when we're going to do the whole Shawn Michaels collapse EMT skit. Do you think in hindsight, we were just ready to move on from diesel or was it just timing of, Hey, we got this idea with Sean and it's time to do something there because it doesn't feel like 24 hours later, diesel's in nearly the same spot. Well, I think it may not have felt that 24 hours later, but diesel was still going to be in a top spot and be involved in everything. You know, sometimes things take time. It doesn't, you don't have to have every answer to every question 24 hours later after a pay-per-view. Sometimes you want to leave the audience asking questions and wonder where the fuck are they going now? Well, I'm, I guess what I'm driving at is it feels like, you know, diesel loses the title and immediately the big story is Shawn Michaels. So it feels like, okay, Sean and Brett are going to be on a collision course here. 
was it tight in Vince's mind? Had we seen enough of diesel going on last? Obviously he can still be a big contributor. He's going to be a big player for us, but at least for now, the audience isn't digging this the way we hoped. So we're going to pivot to Sean. It, it was a time to freshen up the story and change the story up a little bit. You'd had an awful lot of diesel on top. So maybe that character needed to rest and maybe it was time to just you change it up a little bit. Uh, Meltzer would say besides the angle, the other highlights were diesel taking on a new badass baby face image, blaming Vince McMahon on an interview for creating a fake image for him the past year. And again, and attempting to appeal to the 26 to 34 year old male audience as a kick-ass, no apologies, baby face. Are you happy with this transition? You know, I mean, it feels like. I, I would assume when you're, when you're saying motherfucker and you're flipping birds that in this era, that's heel stuff, you know, sort of pre Steve Austin, making it all cool, but the kick-ass, no apologies, baby face. Is that the right term for diesel here? No, I, I really believe that we were looking more for, um, a heel character, but I think that the more heel character we went, the cooler he would become. The house shows over the weekend did, uh, 95,000 in Philadelphia and 163,000 at Madison square garden. That's way, way down from well, what you... I had a friend that was there. So they only did like uh, 22, 4,300 fans in Philly, 7,400 fans in Manhattan. This feels like a bad thing. I mean, this is Thanksgiving weekend. Normally those shows do much better. And for whatever reason. Fans are not turning up for it. And Meltzer would say people didn't know that Brett had won the title in time or, or, or that he would be taking on the undertaker in the main event. So perhaps you guys were just sort of marketing what you had been marketing and fans just weren't that into it. it I feel bad for diesel because it feels like he's done everything that's been asked of him, but he's not connecting with the audience and, and you're blaming really the creative and the way he was presented as the reason it's not like Kevin personally could have done anything differently. Could he? Um, you don't know, I, I don't know that he could, it, and it was creative and it was frankly, I, Kevin, you know, trying to, to pull off the creative and trying to be goofy, you know, crazy Kevin, some of that was him, but a lot of that was a creative decision and that, you know, we want you to be more real. We want, you know, we want, uh, Kevin Nash, you know, from, uh, it just, no, this, I don't think that the, I, this is one of my examples I will always give of a talent really being over with the audience. And so they get over with the audience, you make the change, but then you change the talent. The audience doesn't. They loved, they loved and or hated the character you were presenting. Now, if the character you were presenting at the time wasn't working, maybe you need to change the character. The difference was, was the reason that we made the change with Diesel is because Diesel was getting over with the audience. So let's move that character into a different position uh, in the stories and make him the focal point. As soon as you do that and you in the middle of the character and it's no longer uh, red riding hood. It's now it's Meryl Streep or whoever who went to acting school at Tennessee university or whatever the fuck I wanted to hear about a little red riding hood here. I've got diesel. Who's a kick-ass guy and fucking doing all this cool shit. Uh, he's just a normal guy. He's just a guy who played basketball and in, in college. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.